as a town board trustee, are responsible for oversight of the town's budget and its employees. What steps will you take to provide more accountability and oversight of the town's employees? Uh, I don't know. I guess the uh, regular way that you would uh, in other job sites, uh, job evaluations, uh, personal observation, I guess... Uh, um, get an idea of uh, the work schedule, where they're going to be, what they're going to do. I kind of uh, would go along those lines, um, maybe provide some kind of uh, incentives to the employees to not mishandle equipment and, and vehicles and, uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, some kind of incentive program to, to, to kind of help ensure that. Okay. Uh, I myself are most concerned, question number two, I myself am most concerned about residency issues and how to challenge them for the standing town board is all overseen by one and only one person, so our requests were brought to public comments. There's most often happens, still no answers, it may be disputed directly through the state, but who knows, uh, but one and one, and only one town employee, LOL, same stuff, different issues, great, uh, idea. I hope all candidates participate and if the school wants, we'll take a group of young adults as a journalism or a history lesson. Okay. Um, the first part of this is just a clear cut question. Uh, and I, and, and I, I, uh, would say yes, follow up on, on, on your concerns. Yes. Through the state, uh, or check back in with, uh, the town clerk or one of the town government uh, um, or, the, or the town administrator. I mean, uh, if you don't follow up uh, and uh, be a little proactive, I guess uh, you're not going to get the answers that you're looking for. Uh, as far as uh, the, the young adults attending, uh, well, that's up to the school, right? Okay. Okay. Number three, excise tax on marijuana. How do you, the candidates sit on the issue? When Amendment 64 passed and the town voted it in, the previous town board had discussed implementation of an excise tax. This is the same as other communities who approve legal sales. Somehow this item was dropped, and our town has missed out on a, on a significant amount of revenue. Questions three and four are a multi-part question by the same citizen. So... Uh, uh, I'm not sure that I would support an excise tax uh, just because we're already getting taxes, sales taxes. Um, the numbers have come in, um, and they've been, and they're out there in the open for anyone to, to come and see. Uh, let's see, where are we? Um, uh, a significant amount of money would go to just uh, collecting that excise tax because the state won't do it uh, and so we'd have to do it on our own hire our own person part-time full-time could be uh, 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 more of a detriment may not be very cost effective so yeah again and if you raise taxes uh, uh, on, on on these products and stuff uh, you, you risk losing customers that way because uh, prices will go up and uh, Subsequently, people won't be able to afford it, and they'll go back to the black marketing thing. So there you go. Okay. That's my thoughts on that. Number four, talk is that people in the county are trying to get a ballot initiative to have county sales tax on marijuana, being that it wasn't good enough for them to have in the county or in the other towns in the county. As town board members, would they support the addition of a county imposed sales tax on marijuana sold in Anito? If you are opposed, question three or four, please explain why. And... Well, okay, so there you go. It sounds like I am not really for it, and it's just because, as I stated earlier, uh, you raise taxes, you raise prices, uh, you lose customers, uh, economic uh, uh, um, base won't be improved by that um, from this. And as far as what the county, uh, that whole bit about it not being good enough for the county. I I, uh, I would just as soon not comment very much on that just because I, I don't really feel that that's the issue. Uh, if uh, some folks didn't feel it was right for them, that's fine. Um, and if some folks 
took a negative attitude about it, and, uh, well, so far the town hasn't wound up in a train wreck like some people would think or had thought and expressed. Uh, so um, I, would, I would limit it to, to just my, for my previous statements. Um, raising taxes probably isn't the right answer, but that's just my thought. Okay. Okay, number five. Regarding cannabis and antidote, do you feel taxes on cannabis products, including hemp, should be raised or lowered? Uh, again, no, although hemp isn't currently taxed, and it's on the bill to be, so we'll see how that goes. Amongst other products, uh, um, so number six, uh, cut me off anytime you want there, Johnson, um, if you want a little more expansion on anything. I will do so, thank you. Cannabis in Antonito, do you feel it has, a, has had a benefit or has had a negative impact on the town? In what manner? I think it's both sides of the coin, to tell you the truth. Uh, there's there's, a, there's a, the whole uh, uh, um, group of people that didn't really want marijuana here in the first place uh, and continue to uh, resort to the 1920s uh, uh, evil marijuana uh, uh, stigmas and in, 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 in PR, and fine. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I've heard from young adults that uh, they don't want to be known for just being from a town that was a marijuana town. Uh, we're known for a lot more than that, some better and some worse. So I guess that's pretty much my thought as far as the benefits well the monetary benefit the the, the sales tax um i think has uh, allowed us to make some improvements uh, qualify for loans uh, a little granting uh i think we're being noticed and uh um we've taken the the approach that we'll do what it takes for our town to survive okay Okay, number seven. Similarly, do you feel the numerous cannabis shops and town limits, dab lounge and cannabis-friendly hotel increased tourism in San Diego? If yes, do you feel that they are being, they bring in tourists who assist or burden the town and why? Okay, yes, I feel that uh, uh, they brought in tourists, they brought in revenue. Uh, and again, uh, it depends on uh, the people that are, that are stopping and staying. If they're if if they have resources to support themselves and aren't a burden, then of course uh, they're in addition to the town. If um, if they're standing out on the streets because uh, they don't have a place to stay, well, um, before they came to town, they should have thought of that. Uh, is my thought. Um, I know uh, it's a big draw and everything, but uh, you you should be able to be self-sustaining, in my opinion. Okay. Um, economically and, and uh, well, physically, emotionally, all of you both. So, okay. We're on number eight? Yeah, I believe we're on number eight. Many residents may not know who you are. Can you please explain your history in Anito and if from elsewhere, what brought you to Anito? Oh, hometown boy. My name, you know, everybody knows who I am. Um, grew up here, graduated high school here, raised my kids here, um, and as the song says, probably going to die in this little small town. Oh. That's probably where they're going to bury me. So, okay, number nine. What experience do you have that can benefit Aunt Nito, and how do you plan on achieving these goals if office schools from other town board members are in opposition? Uh, ready? This is, I'm running for my second term, so I think that speaks for itself. Uh, as far as goals, I haven't even thought of those just yet, so that's kind of hard to answer. And obstacles, well, you know, um, I guess you're just not going to get it your way every time. You roll with the, with the flow, you know. Uh, you let people, you're, you make people aware of uh, where you stand and... Uh, if it's a common sense thing, then um, there's no reason to think that it won't pass, whatever the goal may be, whatever the item agenda and agenda item is or whatever. Okay. Okay, number 10. If you chose not to be interviewed on video phone or by audio in person, can you explain your choice? 
I'm going to skip this since we're having the uh, uh, phone call. That sounds great. Number 11, regarding video, if left, will you allow an Elon News or another entity to live stream town board meetings to the Internet or recording meetings, record meetings to video for uploading publicly at a later time? This question has been asked numerous times and by multiple residents. Transparency is an issue of great concern. I don't know that it's so much transparency as, as uh, a lack of resources. If uh, Antonito News or any other entity uh, wants to bring their equipment in, set it up, record, uh, you know, about the Privacy Act and the whole bit, uh, got to go through that bit, you know, and there you go, have at it. Uh, uh, our our uh, meetings are recorded, open to the public, and then uh, hard copied. Uh, so... Uh, if there's an issue about the transparency, it may be people that uh, um, aren't taking the time and effort to uh, make themselves aware of things and go through the proper channels. Okay, on this question itself, uh, regardless of who wins the election, do you think if you were to retain your position that we or another group, like another resident mentioned earlier, bringing a civics class from school to do the recording, that's not part of the town doing the recording, so there would be no request for record? I think there's a privacy act that, uh, uh, for these public meetings or something. Oh, okay. Um, I may be mistaken there. Um, and we'd have to look into that, too. I, I honestly yeah, don't know as well. You know, you sign a, a waiver or a release or whatever, and, and, and I believe that's all you need to do. Okay. I appreciate that. I just wasn't clear on the, on the understanding, so thank you. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, okay, number 12. What do you feel are positive qualities about the town of Antonita and its citizens? Um, kind of hard to say where to begin. Uh, people... Uh, are very okay here. They're hardworking. Some more than others, obviously. Um, there's a genuine concern um, for neighbors, relatives, um, folks that you see on the street, uh, your uh, grocery store cashiers, and on and on. Um, I think there's a community spirit here that transcends um, whatever religion they, they practice, uh, uh, gender, race, uh, sexual preference, the whole bit. I, I, it's it's a small town, homey spirit that, uh, that that you see on the old TV show, maybe area uh, RFD or something. Yeah. Um, the Andy Griffith show. I I. I I see our town uh, having that sort of um, um, low-key friendliness, hominess, uh, and, and, and as I say, there's hard workers, there's achievers, there's um, people that have uh, left their mark uh, uh, emotionally and, and historically. Do you think that growth of any type, whether it's outside uh, coming in and starting businesses or local starting businesses would impact that quality of of the community of Antonito knowing and caring for one another? Well, it certainly depends on the people coming in. Uh, that, that's true. Uh, nothing lasts forever. What I would, what I would say is that uh, 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 if you come in and with good intentions and, are, and, and an open mind and, and a bit of flexibility, I, I, can, I, I can see the town's uh, character remaining um, more or less along those same lines. Okay, thank you. Where are we at? Uh, the negative qualities, number 13, what do you feel are negative qualities occurring within the town of Antonito? How do you plan on addressing these if elected? Okay, uh, naturally there's not enough jobs to go around. Our economic base is very small. We also have uh, a hard drug problem um, with uh, opioids and uh, the fake ones and, and what have you. Um, uh, the harder drugs, the heroin, the cocaine, or meth. Um, all of the I, those are negatives. They're also across the board, across the nation, around the world. So I don't take any. Uh, a special, it, it's not so personal, but uh, yeah, we could use a little 
less of that and and, and um, um, how how to achieve that is uh, there's so many answers to that that uh, no, no single way is going to work on, on 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 any of that so uh, so those are the negative qualities I feel are a problem here okay okay number 14 many residents are unhappy about some unsightly yards lots in town overflowing the fleets junk of both I plan to address this issue if there is a current municipal code how could this be better enforced well uh, I'm sure that for the most part these people aren't doing it on purpose however you know uh, some may there's there's res there's people who have limited resources uh, and their options are limited. Uh, I know that uh, the town sponsors yearly uh, uh, cleanup campaigns, uh, and a lot of trash hauling is done for free. Uh, but you know, and there's some years where there's centralized dumpsters to go take your stuff. But if you don't have the vehicle to do it, then oh my gosh, you know, there's issues. So uh, that all being said, I. As far as enforcing the municipal code, I would look for more towards uh, communicating with these folks, trying to work with them, help them out, uh, providing um, uh, trailers or whatever it takes, uh, uh, a dumpster, a polycar, maybe for, you know, a month's worth or so of free use to get rid of some of the stuff, kind of. Kind of make them aware of uh, of uh, municipal code, uh, and as far as uh, you know, burning uh, uh, debris that's yard debris and that, uh, folks, I, I guess don't realize that you can do that. So, those are some of the things I, I would just share information and try and work with them. Okay, that sounds good. Um, giving them citations and stuff just adds to the uh, to the to the uh, to the issue for some folks and. I just don't see that as fair. And, and, and I can see that, especially in a lower-income community and a lot of disabled and elders and, and so on and so forth. But uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you plan on working with someone who doesn't take the initiative to follow up on asking for a trailer or for help or for accepting volunteers to help assist clean up? Would that be appropriate to cite them, regardless of who they may be or age or anything? I guess if you provide them with those options and they turn you down, I guess that would be the next step. Okay. Uh, and whether you would use that as a, as a sort of a big stick to uh, uh, kind of coerce them into doing cooperating, I don't know, because uh, um, I'm not really that heavy-handed normally. So. And I, and I understand. It's a tough one. It is, it is. It's definitely tough, but uh, hopefully we'll get the town cleaned up here with uh, community help. Yes, a little more involvement, a little more participation uh, goes a long way. Um, right now we're a little short-handed uh, on the town crew as it is, so any help would be appreciated. Okay. Okay, number 15, have you reached out to other candidates you're running against during campaigning? Do you feel you have been able to work with other candidates during this election smoothly without incident? I've encountered two of the candidates uh, on the uh, Time for Change side. Uh, shook their hands, wished them luck, uh, and, and that was the extent of it. I listened to, to the mayoral candidate speech uh, one, one, one morning and, and, and had the opportunity to, to to wish him luck, and, and I, I don't know if that's smooth or what, but uh, I didn't attend their their um, oh, their meet and greet uh, at the Cafe del Valle a couple weeks back or whatever it was, just a little occupied. Um, but so there you go. Whether it's smooth or not, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> I need to get a quick sip of water. Just give me a second. We're on number 16. Okay. I'm going to pause the recording really quick. Okay, we're back and starting with question number, I believe it was 16. 16. Concerns exist about the Workshire Mansion and its condition. Materials, cost for repair, and use of the grounds, and storage for heavy equipment, trash trucks, or large items. If elected, speaking of the exterior only, what do you imagine or hope the property land to look like, including the large cement area west of the building? 
Uh, well, better than what it does now. And yes, uh, it's been it's been worked on as far as uh, equipment, uh, parking, and storage, and whatnot. Right now, it's a uh, work in progress. Um, and as far as the landscaping bit, uh, we there's going to be a community garden there, and, and uh, some other side items. Uh, an outdoor kitchen and an outdoor uh, ortno. Um, so that's going to add to the to the landscaping uh, towards the west end, uh, running north to south. Uh, the rest of it, uh, I I would say, would remain as much lawn like as it is now uh, um, for uh, public use uh, as a park. So. Um, and those are still those are details that are still kind of up in the air. So it's it it, it changes uh, the plan changes as as uh, as uh, as as it needs to uh, if we get better materials, some cheap cheaper prices on some supplies, that sort of thing. Um, we'll work with what we have and and are open to any suggestions that uh, do come across. Okay. Okay. 17. Residents have observed the removal of many portions of the mansion as well as movement of materials that came with the home and or, or property. One specific observation brought to our attention by a few readers is that a large stack of stone or type of decorative rock thought to have been a portion of the mansion structure and possibly expensive was removed from the mansion grounds after purchase, then relocated to a home in town where the pile is said to have gradually decreased in size and was later found elsewhere in the county. How do you plan on investigating this issue? And if found to be true, it unauthorized, unauthorizedly seek restitution or criminal charges. Well, that's kind of a PD question. Uh, I would hope that that would be done, uh, the last part of that, criminal charges, the whole thing. Uh, and I've, I've seen a few of those stones uh, at a residence on River Street in, a, in an attempt to repair uh, the, some, some sidewalk that got torn up uh, during a, a tree root removal. And that's just uh, in the next block south of the mansion itself. Uh, and anyone can check and see that those are the same stones. Uh, and yes, I saw the same pile that everyone else did because really it wasn't hidden. Um, it was parked behind a PD unit that was there for the longest time. So again, if uh, if uh, if there's evidence, if PD finds evidence, and there's and there's reason to press charges and, and the whole bit, sure. Okay. Okay, uh, 18, what are you going to do to enforce existing loose dog ordinance? This has a, a huge effect on the visitors of the narrow gauge inn who complain daily about the dogs running loose. This affects every business in town. Motorcyclists should not have to kick dogs off them riding through. They are not stopping to spend money if they have, worry, have to worry about dogs biting, begging, whatever. Uh, okay, yeah, we, we had, we had initially, uh, some people that I know that were volunteering to do this uh, uh, dog uh, rescue thing. As far as um, um, the dogs that are on the loose and that are potentially dangerous, aggressive, we'd, we'd, we'd need to get an officer in uh, that'll enforce code in uh, part-time dog catching have his own unit um, to transport uh, and, and all the equipment that it takes. Uh, of course, we've we've attempted, I've, or I've seen uh, Alamosa's uh, dog catcher. They were over uh, here in town trying to catch dogs one weekend about five years ago, and I believe they didn't get a single one. So. Uh, we need we need to make uh, room in the budget for for somebody to do that and uh, do it safely and have all the tools and equipment and uh, and uh, vehicle that they need to uh, to uh, take care of the situation. Okay. So we're number nineteen. I believe. Nineteen. Who is the town's MED cannabis officer? The minutes state 
the licenses were issued to an officer in our community? Has this been established or reflected? It has not. Will you work to establish this? I'm not sure what we need a, a town MED cannabis officer for. Um, I, if it's to uh, monitor uh, the dispensaries and the dab lounge and all that, um, um, PD uh, seems to be uh, on it. Um, however, people feel that we need somebody other than our police department, then by all means, uh, I certainly will work to establish this. Okay. Okay. Are you planning to enforce public consum consumption of cannabis, and how do you plan on monitoring the dispensaries, grows, and dab lounge? Ensure legal responsibility. Will you have the Antonio Police? Increase patrol of cannabis within that needle and dispensaries, breaking or bending of statutes regarding Amendment 64 and or municipal code, if any. Well, there's a few uh, uh, parts of municipal code that do address that. So, yeah, there are there is some. Uh, PD, again, as I, as I stated earlier, uh, seems like uh, they're on top of it. Uh, uh, I... I'm given to understand that uh, if they find uh, uh, if they if they find somebody consuming in in public, then I guess they get ticketed for it. Um, I'm not sure what the numbers are there. I haven't seen very high numbers on that, and uh, I'm I'm sure if uh, if uh, if they're being if they're if they're if they're being spotted out, they're they're being ticketed, uh, warned, whatever. Okay, I appreciate that, and we can look into that after the election with uh, local law enforcement. To, so maybe we could find some of that information out, but uh, I appreciate your answer. Hmm. What are your plans for the Worth Charmant uh, Will it be for town hall use only? Can the public access the facilities for events and free or for a cause? Will preservation of the woodwork, artwork, and stone be a priority? Will historic accuracy be retained during refurbishment as much as possible. Do you plan on seeking grants to further assist? Um, it's going to be open to the public and not just for town hall use and everything else is a yes, 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 yes. Um, we are doing all of the above currently and uh, the people that are working on the place are aware of uh, what they can't do especially uh, with the wall murals and the whole bit. Uh, so, um, and yes, uh, grants uh, in, in the, yeah, everything is a yes there, okay? Okay. How will the mansion's grounds be kept regarding vehicles? We have landscape professionals, town employees, or court sentence, community service recipients, take caretaking of the mansion grounds. Will any interior caretakers be hired? New town employees to assist with the town. Uh, we're probably hiring one new person, I believe, and uh, we'll probably use uh, community service people wherever we can. It just kind of cuts costs a little bit um, to help maintain the grounds and uh, some of the building or whatever. I guess that depends how that goes. Uh, landscape professionals, uh, I think that's uh, uh, going to be uh, done as necessary and as uh, budget allows. Um, so in, uh, we're going to set up uh, where our, our uh, uh, water waste treatment plant, our, our water treatment plant is uh, for vehicles and equipment. Um, we have quite a bit of land out there that we can uh, park on and, and build uh, maintenance shops on and whatnot. So uh, yeah, that's all being, uh, it's just a work in progress. Okay, that makes sense. In between the gas station and the laundromat on Main Street there, there's vehicles parked there where the old Texaco or PD used to be, and then across the street next door to the library. Are those going to be there throughout the duration of the mansion restoration, or is that the work in progress you're referring to, that we're trying to move those out of the Main Street as well? That's the work in progress I'm referring to that we're going to do as well. Okay, great. Mansions, grounds, be oh, whoops, wrong one. Okay, okay. Do you believe 
that any form of separatism currently exists in this community, such as racism, classism, nepotism, or others. Have you heard? You don't belong because you're not a local, or you don't belong here because of your skin color. How do you plan on handling this once elected if it becomes a town member issue with residents? Uh, I know that there's a lot of separatism in this town, as in every other town. Uh, there's some amount of racism, classism, and nepotism. Yes, yes, there is. I don't know if that's par for the course, part of human nature, or um, something that's being observed by a lot of people with of way too much time on their hands. I don't know. Uh, and, and as far as whether you're a local or not, yes, uh, of course, I've heard that. And the skin color, uh, re meant refer referring to other people. Um, I don't agree with any of that. Uh, if these people are settling in here, and, and as I say, uh, have their resources to support themselves and their household, and they're more than welcome in my mind and eyes, and I do go out of my way to, to meet uh, the newer residents uh, and uh, get acquainted. Um, okay. Yeah, I've, been, I've done that since, well, quite a long time. Okay. How often will you be available for the residents of the town, and will town hall hours change? Will you be working on a website sharing budget and expenditures? publicly or minutes to meetings. Well, to answer the last part, uh, uh, a website and that, that's kind of out of my league. That's not part of my uh, skill set. I'll be happy to, to uh, uh, look over and see if that they're accurate, you know, that it's transparent or anything, whatever uh, comes up as far as concerns are. Um, and as far as availability by the residents, um, I believe I'm as available as as you can be, most most folks know where I live, where I where I where I might be found. Um, so uh, yeah, um, I don't know if I can improve on that, but I'll sure try. And as far as town hall hours, uh, they are what they are. Uh, if uh, <clears throat> if we get an extra hand or or a little bit more uh, in the budget, you know, it just I get. It. That's pretty much how that works. Okay, yeah, and the question I think was referring, I apologize for interrupting you earlier, um, but uh, I think that night hours were a question that some people were hoping for so they could actually speak to a person instead of just dropping a, you know, a bill through a slot. And mm -hmm. that would be, that was the basis, I think, of the, the question itself. Uh, I, I guess that could be worked on, uh, um, you know, a couple of nights a week or something. Um, uh, maybe rearrange those hours, a couple of short days, and then or split shift kind of days or something, and, and yeah, yeah, I, or or the second person uh, doing evening hours, uh, you know, just for you know that kind of thing, bill paying and all that, um, something to look at. Okay. Okay. What is the expected timetable for street paving? There's not a real timetable there. It's just a matter of how. How much uh, is left to, to, to finish up underneath uh, our uh, sewer lines? Uh, and now this uh, um, uh, up this this cable that's going in. Um, the, fi the fiber. Fiber cable, yeah, fiber optic uh, that's going in. Um, it, it, we just assume see all that get done, and then and then uh, and then smooth it over to cosmetics of paving and and. Uh, Curb and gutter where we can. Okay. Okay. What is your history in Anito? How long have you lived in town limits and been active with the community? Lifelong uh, uh, resident. Uh, <clears throat> I've been active with the community since uh, I was a Boy Scout uh, back in the uh, mid or early 70s. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've done. Uh, uh, community service uh, with with the uh, Labor Day weekend events, uh, coordinating, organizing, uh, co-hosting.
thing. Um, this has been going on since 2010 or so. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Number 24, do you feel that Anthony Rowe has a working relationship with Canales County Commissioners? What benefits do you see once elected of working with the county to improve Anthony Rowe? Um, I, I don't know how open that door is. So I'm, I'm acquainted with one of the commissioners. Um, but uh, as far as uh, uh, benefits, I'm sure it's going to be a two-way street. It's going to be a give and take, uh, kind of scratch my back, scratch your back kind of thing. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I don't see that uh, it'd be a negative thing, but uh, so far uh, uh, I don't know how much, how, how, how coordinated we are in, in working together. So that's, that's really a tough one to answer. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Number 25, we've had many projects in the last decade be built and growing from Antonito citizens and locals outside of Antonito. Are you familiar with any of these projects or involved with them in some manner? Uh, just for the last four years with the... Uh, with the uh, uh, two Main Street renovation, um, that's uh, the uh, 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 the water supply renovations that we've done, uh, starting the river down through the Tonka uh, filtration system and the whole bit. Um, just so for the last four years, anyway. Uh, and a lot of the building has been. Uh, done by some of our local contractors who hire locally, and uh, and and to my to, to my knowledge, uh, the, uh, even the uh, the uh, highway project uh, that was done by a, by a company out of Springs, I believe, Colorado Springs, they hired locals wherever they could. Um, I don't know what the percentages are or the hard numbers, but. Uh, I, I think for the most part, we try and, and um, um, hire as locally as we possibly can. Okay, that sounds good. Okay. If 26, if elected, are you going to allow more cannabis dispensaries, liquor stores, or other adult businesses to receive permits? On this subject, do you feel cannabis or alcohol contribute to our regional, national opioid issue? Um, <clears throat> if, if you have... A dependency problem or issue in your life. I don't know that there's any difference between any of these substances to start with. Um, so increasing uh, permits in, in these areas, uh, as far as other adult businesses, I. <laughs> That's really open-ended. Um, I don't know what other ones we'd allow in this town. We're, we didn't allow gambling. I'm pretty sure we're not going to uh, legalize pros prostitution or anything like that. So, yeah. Um, and I don't think the question was, really was hinting at that. Uh, do I think, uh, as I say, if you, have a, if you have a dependency problem, uh, if you have uh, the addictive uh, nature, gene or, or personality or whatever, I don't see a difference in any of these uh, um, um, substances as far as that goes. Okay. okay. What are your plans if elected to help the transient population in warmer months or those who are unable to care for themselves? Are you familiar with the number of Antonito elder population and how many, li how many live alone? Do you find this acceptable? This town employee, can you suggest anything to assist with, uh, with these issues? Okay, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm a member of the Antonito Senior Citizen Center, and so yes, I'm pretty well aware of, of the number of people that are elderly and live alone. Um, if that's their choice, that's their that's their choice. What are you gonna do? Uh, I don't know how that can be affected as far as the transient population. The, the concern there is, is in the wintertime, not so much in the warmer months. Uh, if they're around in the wintertime and they have nowhere to go, they're camping out by the river somewhere or something, yeah, that's a concern. What to do about it? Well, gee, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> we don't have any flies.
flop houses around here or anything like that. <clears throat> and I don't know if we're going to have any space available to at the mansion or anywhere else on town property that could accommodate uh, um, a homeless shelter type thing. Although I'd like to see something like that go up. Um, currently, uh, we don't have something like that, although I, I feel like we could use it. However, if we have something like that, will it make, will it aggravate that, that concern, that, that possible problem? Will it make it worse? Will we have more transients? Um, it's a two, two, both sides of the coin there. That's how I see it. Okay. Okay. Number 28, uh, concerning local businesses, including the Coombers and Tulip Exchange, is there something you as a town employee can think of to bring back the summer festival Fontanito by other smaller events, business assistance, or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> That's where it ends, the question ends. Um, uh, I think there's some festivals planned besides the Labor Day weekend event. Uh, I think people would like to uh, to see uh, smaller events, yes. Um, uh, and, I, and I don't know whatever happened to the Coolers and Toltec uh, uh, event. Uh, it was in the spring, and then it was transferred to the fall, and then I don't know if they stopped doing it and just went to their spring grand opening kind of uh, deal. I, I, I really couldn't address that. Uh, I participated in, in some of those, and so I've seen the changes over the years. Um, I, I guess I would, I would of course, uh, uh, be willing to help out with uh, doing things on a smaller scale. Um, I don't know, uh, free movies uh, at one of the parks or something. Um, I don't know, uh, free uh, music events. Uh, and these are things that are being worked on, but uh, it's finding the people that, that, that'll that go ahead and do these things and, and volunteer to do that because uh, um, recreational budgets uh, are limited like everything else. Okay. Okay. 29, right? Right. <sighs> Some residents are concerned over the issue of family working together within the town of Antonito, which ties into some nepotism related to curiosity. Do you feel that family members immediate or distant should be allowed to work together, and does this include executive session? Well, you know, given our reality uh, as far as our population goes and the amount of people that do step up to, to, to either apply to work, volunteer to the uh, on-town government, um, there's going to be a certain amount of nepotism, yep, uh, and there's going to be mem people that are related to each other, possibly uh, married to each other or whatever, uh, that are, that, that, um, that are going to, that, where that, and then that's going to occur. What to do about it, who can say, uh, as far as executive sessions go, um, uh, those are limited to to uh, sitting board members um, and the party involved. Um, in most cases, if they're present, if they're not, then then uh, the the exec executive session isn't open to just everyone. And and the most recent one, uh, the, there was a the, the, there was a session that. Uh, uh, our town administrator recused himself from. So uh, it involved uh, one of our town employees, and uh, he recused himself and, and, and left it to his uh, immediate supervisor to uh, sit with him okay. in that session as per request and, and honored. So okay. that's... Did that answer that? It did. Okay. For, for, for 29, it did. Um, 2030 kind of continues that with the law enforcement aspect. Oh, and it was often law enforcement, and it was often had a high turnover rate with 
new offices moving on to larger agencies which can afford better pay or advancement opportunities if elected. What is your stance on having a police commissioner in place? If a commissioner is in place and that new officers have a grievance with the commissioner requesting something unusual, <clears throat> we have a police commissioner uh, in place. I don't know if uh, our officers need a uh, a sort of chain of command, uh, as it were, for a grievance procedure or something. I suppose we could put that in place as well, involving uh, other board members or or um, uh, or even other police officers. I guess I don't know. It depends on what 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 people would what they're looking for. Um, it's it's a little confusing, and as far as our our turnover over rate, yes, uh, uh, we've had a lot of police come and go, uh, officers uh, uh, that move on to bigger and better things, and I guess you can't you can't fault them for that. Um, it seems like it's stabilized for now, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. Thirty one. Here's a question I would ask: Wouldn't the mansion be an asset for the town? One hundred seventy to five thousand is a bargain. This building and with renovation, restoration of value would surely increase. In addition, it could be a tourist attraction and hopefully bring more tourist dollars to the area, particularly if there were a museum-type display in the building in addition to town offices. Well, that's kind of in the plan, folks. Um, all of the above is in the plan, and yes, it was a bargain. We may never see a total return on that on that investment, but uh, it, will, uh, it will be there for... Uh, future generations to reflect back on their town's heritage and history. Okay. Okay, 32. Similarly, some questions ask about other uses for the mansion. Will it be used to build a town jail for housing intoxicated parties or minor crimes, or will Antonito stick to using county jail? Uh, as far as I know, we're going to use county jail, although I know uh, the basement area uh, has a lot of thick concrete down there. Um, and and there is room to uh, install uh, uh, plumbing and, and and electrical and uh, whatever it takes to house somebody uh, in that manner, uh, that fashion, you know, in a jail itself. Uh, I guess it's something that we could look at, whether we want to or not. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Thirty-three. Will the mansion have space for community events? How much of the mansion will you allow to the public now during renovation within safety limits and in the future once moved into what will become of the former town hall? Well, I I believe uh, uh, the property, uh, the former town hall, I think we're going to try and get it sold um, to pay pay up on this uh, on this uh, note for the mansion uh, and as far as space. Um, I I would say that most of the grounds will be more than available uh, to, to for community events um, during renovation. Um, I would I would say limit uh, watch where you step and stuff. You know, there's there's uh, there was the, uh, the there's digging going on. There's you know there's there's maybe some loose earth there that uh, you may not notice. Um, just be careful when you're over there. Uh, as far as I know, it's it's open to the public. Uh, but uh, again, uh, you have to have, I would say, uh, exercise a little care while on the property until, until these reservations are completed. Okay. Number 34, why are you running for a town board position and what makes you the best candidate? Um, running for a second term, uh, I, I, I think uh, there's a little bit left to be done uh, that, uh, that we've gotten started on as I've become uh, aware of town government and, and its operation. Uh, I kind of find myself drawn more to <coughs> serving as best I can. Um, I, I, I'd like to, to finish up some of the stuff, some of the projects that uh, we've started. Um, so there you go. Okay. Okay. What would, 35, what would you do to attract more visitors and add income to the town and businesses in the area? Well, I guess whatever I could promote the town 
in any way I could. <laughs> um, either uh, events or, or um, um, uh, I guess, the ambiance of the town, if you will. I, I, I uh, try and represent uh, uh, Antonito uh, whenever I have to. Um, as as uh, as courteously and as upfront as as we are here, um, and and I and I try and be truthful about uh, our our town, what it has to offer, uh, um, and uh, um, I there I I guess that's about it there. Okay. Okay. Number 36, how do you feel about inter-office relationships? Do you feel this could cause issues for town residents, tourists, or the town? If so, how and why? Uh, <clears throat> this uh, refers to a current situation I'm aware of, and uh, so far there's been no problems. Um, these, these people uh, um, show up on time, do their job, pull their shift. As far as I know, and uh, don't allow their their private life to to uh, intermix with their public with their with their function in the public. Um, has it, if it becomes a concern, then then I, I suppose we'll look at it then and, and see what kind of changes we can we can come up with uh, alternate uh, uh, ways of doing things or something. I don't know. Okay. I, I was going to specify the question as re in regards to certain positions, but it sounds like you are understanding of that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, 37, if you are an incumbent, share with us what you have done for the town. Oh, I mostly listen to people when they have issues or concerns. I've, I've uh, uh, organized and coordinated the uh, Labor Day weekend events since 2010. Uh, while I've been on the board the last four years, I've, I've helped oversee uh, all the town projects that are currently either in the works or have been completed. Um, uh, but I feel, again, uh, the biggest contribution I've made is, is, is to just um, be there for the citizens who have a concern, a complaint, an issue, and I, I either help resolve, I, I, I let them know I, there's not much I can do about it, um, and I, I hope the citizens understand that policies and procedures sometimes tie my hands. That's understandable. Okay. Uh, 38, if you're new to the board, what are your two top goals? Uh, I'm not new, but I'll say the two top goals is to continue to uh, um, improve the town's infrastructure and to continue to attract uh, business and tourists to to the town uh, and and find and well, I guess number three would find a way to broaden our economic base. Okay. okay. Thirty-nine. How important is it for you and the entire town board to get along and work together? Well. Uh, we're all different people. We're all individuals. Uh, it'd be nice to be able to work together, but uh, there's different opinions, uh, and some of them um, are um, directly opposite of, of uh, others. And so, you know, finding those happy mediums, uh, some kind of uh, uh, compromise, uh, if we can, if we can do that, then good enough. Because uh, we only. Most of us only see each other that one night a, a month that we're that we're holding those board meetings. Um, you know what goes on in their daily lives and stuff. I hope they get through it. I hope they're well and everything. But, uh, but we're so uh, 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 the acquaintance is so. Uh, I don't know. Um, um, was it like a time you constraint know type of well issue? Enough to really dislike each other, tell you the truth, or uh, that's my thought, that's my opinion. So there you go. Okay. Okay. Uh, Forty. What do you see as the biggest problem facing Antonito that no one wants to talk about? Um, well, gosh, uh, 
socially, uh, uh, I would say that uh, we we uh, could use a little bit of work on that. Uh, we we have this uh, Mexicano mentality that uh, that uh, we have to be jealous of our neighbors and we have to belittle uh, everyone around us, and at times. Uh, that's not always, but at times uh, it seems like uh, uh, there is a certain amount of viciousness uh, towards the people that uh, we've known the longest or related to or all of the above. Okay? I think that that's something that uh, we all need to work on, trying to get along. Okay. 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 What do you see as a past positive improvements to the town, and if you could improve on those improvements, what would you do and how? Uh, I think past positive improvements uh, go toward, towards our infrastructure, and just completing those would be the thing. Um, I think we've attracted a, a little bit of business, a few more businesses to this town, and, and some expansions, but I've seen some reductions, too. Um, I think we attract a, a diverse uh, a uh, bunch of people to the town, um, and I see that as an improvement because it just uh, gives us more people to talk to, more ideas to work with, and that that has to be positive, uh, in my opinion. Okay. 42, what would you do to make Antonito a safer and happier place to live? Um, I don't know. I think it goes back to the op opioid problem. If if we find a way to get a handle on that, then I think that'll make Antonito a safer and happier place to live. Uh, I think uh, the whole uh, drug abuse issue results in, in, in a lot of uh, different types of crime to happen, to occur. Your burglaries, your, your thefts. Uh, uh, and, and, and some of your assaults in order to either uh, fund this this uh, opioid uh, uh, dependency or, or um, and so yeah I think uh, getting a handle on that would be would be to keep uh, keep the town safer and happier okay. 43, would you support alternative means of city revenue, and what would they be? How would you do it, and in what time frame do you think results would be seen? I'm not sure what, uh, what that means, alternative means of city revenue. I guess uh, I guess we could uh, sponsor a GoFundMe page uh, uh, and uh, see if anybody will contribute to the support of the town. Uh, I, uh, and as far as, uh, I don't know, um, there's, there's only so many options you can have with taxation, uh, mill levy, and that sort of thing. So um, certainly open to, uh, to uh, any new information on uh, how to generate revenue. Uh, okay. 44, how would you expand and add to Antonio's economy? Uh, again, that's uh, the catch-all. Uh, several attempts have been made in the past. Uh, to bring uh, different businesses, uh, uh, even different uh, industries, in, into the area, and they've and, and none of them have come to fruition. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to come up with uh, ideas that uh, that the population will approve of, um, especially if there's concerns about the environment, the air, the water, uh, the surrounding areas uh, are are are. are our whole river uh, basin, um, our whole watershed, and so you know, people just they're concerned about that. So, um, what to offer in the way of uh, um, uh, to broaden our economic base? Uh, there's things that have been rejected. We're still struggling to look for other things. I guess I would go with recreational and tourist attraction type things. Um, do you by chance know if the solar has had any positive impact financially to the town? Money back, or are they getting a refund for generating electricity or a, a future yeah, solar? Probably assist as far as the solar garden. I do believe uh, it's still in the process of paying for itself. Um, 
we're not getting any money from public service, but we're not paying for for uh, municipals with, with the with what the town government uses in in, in electricity. Um, that I'm aware of, but uh, much more than that, no. Okay. Okay. I lost my place. Um, do, 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 do. Um, oh, okay. Forty-five. Do you, as an incumbent or newly appointed candidate, agree with past and future improvements of the town of Antonito? Uh, no, not all of them. I don't agree with all of them. Um, I think uh, uh, in the past uh, uh, we put the horse before the cart. Now we're trying to plan a little better so that future improvements uh, 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 happen on time or in a timely manner in, 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 in a step-by-step -step procedure. Uh, like the infrastructure underground uh, before we do uh, road paving. So, both sides of the coin there. Yeah, that makes sense. What, what, 46, what, new, what kind of new business do you think the community could use and why? Uh, I think we could concentrate a little bit more on our, our tourist industry, although that's not a reliable and consistent kind of uh, industry. It's seasonal, obviously, and since we don't have a, a ski resort or ski lift anywhere near here other than Taos or Wolf Creek. Um, and we're kind of centrally located there, so maybe maybe uh, a little more along the lines of, uh, of uh, uh, I don't know, um, uh, a kind of service industry to provide, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, trips or to, to, to these uh, ski resorts in the wintertime, uh, I don't know, maybe expand a little uh, during during the, the winter season on, on, on all the available hunting um, and uh, all the back backcountry things that you can do, um, whether you cross-country ski or, or have a snowmobile or, 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 or just like to go build uh, igloos out there in the snow or something. I mean, I don't know. Okay. Uh, those are some of the things I would look at. Just uh, our uh, our uh, our local resources, our natural resources, are somewhat limited and uh, mostly uh, uh, unavailable to us. So uh, it's hard to work with that. Okay. One quick question I had, and uh, I hadn't asked uh, the other uh, candidate by voice, but. Uh, there's the property across from uh, north of the Silo Park and east of the Family Dollar, and then there's the property next to the library and the water park, and then along Main Street. Are those town properties, or are those privately owned? Um, let me see. North of Silo Park, I believe that belongs to the town. Okay, so let's just use that for example. Um, the the property that's north of Silo Park, if it does belong to the town, and you know the one across from uh, the former gas station and uh, Family Dollar, mm -hmm. would that be able to be used as a community garden separate from the other working community gardens for the veterans and for the youth? Would locals just be able to use that property, plant it, till it, you know, do whatever we need to do as locals, raising our own our own food? Is that something that the town would be willing to do under council member? I could see myself voting yes for that. Uh, yes, absolutely. It would uh, at least uh, improve the look of the of the property. Um, and if it's and if it's uh, if it's a, a a voluntary communal sort of project uh, that the people want to do, the citizens want to do. I would I would certainly support uh, uh, an action item uh, on the agenda to that effect. Sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, great. I think uh, forty-seven is where we're at. Okay, forty-seven. Regarding community business, marijuana is legal in Antonio, though not in Conez County, for sale. And we're told there is a commissioner who is for the ban in county on can cannabis products, voting no against it but also is alleged to run an Antonito cannabis shop in town limits. Uh, I believe this commissioner owns that property, but he doesn't actually run the shop. Whatever revenue he draws off of there, I would tend to say is in the form of a rent, but I, I don't know. I really don't know. And uh, as far as his stand on... Uh, 
illegality or, or marijuana in, in the county, I don't know that he voted no again. But I again, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So, but that's all I know for sure is that uh, he owns that property, but doesn't actually run it himself. Okay. Uh, okay. Where are we? Forty-eight. Forty-eight. We all have faced challenges. Tell us about a time when you overcame a challenge. Okay. Well, uh, it started out when uh, I was sent to live with my grandmother and uh, had to fend for myself for the most part. Um, and instead of taking the little road and, and, and just winding up in the gutter, uh, I decided to keep, keep myself uh, employed with money in my pocket and, and uh, uh, attempting to be as... Uh, as uh, self-sustaining as I possibly can. And I still do that to this day. Okay. 49, what professional achievements are you most proud of? Well, uh, I guess I would go back to, to my answer for 48. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm self-sustaining. I, I, uh, I currently self-employed and uh, really should be at work right now, but uh, either way, I... Uh, no, no, no achievement stands, stands out in particular other than, uh, um, oh, being as versatile as I have to be so that I maintain, uh, employment. Okay. Okay. 50, what one skill makes you the most qualified for the position you are running for? Uh, I've become a skilled negotiator. Uh, and I've become a skilled listener. And by being able to have the one skill to listen, um, I, I think I effectively negotiate uh, compromises that uh, may not make you completely happy, but you won't be completely left out. So, good? Can you explain that a little bit further? Well, uh, I guess I could give a, a, an example, not using names. There's a construction project that's going to go out, that's happening, uh, uh, that this person wants to do on their property. They want to build a gazebo. Uh, they were, they were, their, their, their the limits of their, their structure was, was, uh, not in compliance with town code. Uh, and so, uh, just with a little, Go between being acting as a go between uh, between the town administrator and uh, this property owner. I was able to reach a compromise uh, where uh, the property owner can proceed with this project and uh, codes being followed. Oh, okay. Okay. Is that close enough? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I believe uh, fifty one, uh, fifty two. Somewhere around there was where we were. Tell us, okay, fifty-one. Tell us about, tell us a little about yourself, background, skills, etc. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, raised, born, raised here in Antonito. Lifelong resident. Uh, graduate of high school here in Antonito. Uh, graduate of Adams State College. Uh, class of eighty-five there. Um, military service. Army veteran. Four years. Um, raised uh, four four children, two four four children of my own, and two stepchildren. Currently, uh, fostering a grandchild. Let's see. Uh, hmm. Uh, skills. Well, jack of all trades. Uh, I've I've worked in the building trades. Uh, in the military, I was I was a vehicle mechanic. Uh, both wheeled and track mechanic. Uh. So I understand quite a, a bit of that. Uh, and as for people skills, uh, I've been in, uh, in, involved in music uh, pretty much all my life. Uh, I'm currently in a in a in a couple of cover bands, and uh, so my I I think I have decent people skills, public uh, uh, skills. And a willingness to uh, to uh, step up and um, either help out or or uh, or uh, um, in community.
community events and stuff, uh, um, or just help the little old lady across the street, hold doors open, and that sort of thing. Okay. Now, a lot of these questions are similar, so if, of course, if you want to summarize the the latter ten or so questions, are are fairly similar. I'm trying to, yeah, describe your working style and how you would use it positively to to positively affect the community. I guess I'm a hands-on kind of guy, so uh, yeah, it's like with those Labor Day weekend events. Uh, I just went out and started uh, uh, signing. Uh, Entertainment, uh, and that's normally what I what I what I work on mostly is the entertainment bit, uh, a two day music stage event, and uh, um, so uh, yeah, I I I like to uh, uh, be in the thick of things, uh, shoveling with the shovel or sawing with the saw or or changing my own tire or, or uh, whatever else comes up. I think uh, uh, that would be helpful to the community when uh, when we uh, when we need to do the things like to clean up things and and, and uh, just just take a hand and involve myself in, in in helping keep things a little neat and orderly, you know. Okay. So yeah, I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Okay. Thank you. Fifty-three. If elected, what is the first thing you would tackle, and why? Uh, the first thing I'd like to tackle is to get this uh, uh, water treatment uh, uh, thing going. Uh, we've got recently we've gotten approved for the funding, so it's just a matter of uh, getting the ball rolling on, on construction and the whole bit. So. Um, and that would also wrap up uh, everything that we have to do underground so that we can um, uh, resurface our streets and get them back uh, get them back up and, and, and maybe a little better than what they were. Because I, I, I know there's a lot of streets that uh, are nothing but potholes and, and uh, primitive road conditions and all that. Our alley is the same thing. Uh, we're all well aware of that. Um, I guess that's what... That's what I would tackle first, and, and why. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, number 54. What excites you about the position you are wanting, and why? Uh, that's really uh, uh, a long answer for such a short question, because to me, this has been a wonderful adventure. Um, I have had to find out a few things. Uh, I've had to educate myself to my to my limits as as, as a board member. Uh, I've had to educate myself uh, uh, as far as town ordinance, uh, state statutes, um, town code. Um, it's all a learning process. Uh, that's exciting. Um, getting getting things done. Uh, for the good of the community, um, the infrastructure, the recreation, re recreational events, the, um, uh, the 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 day to day issues that folks may have in uh, in in dealing with um, well uh, what they call government red tape. Okay. Trying to help them out and get through all that so that. Uh, uh, and and uh, the idea that uh, that I'm uh, uh, hopefully making a difference in a positive way, uh, that's exciting. Okay, number 55, what is your name, approximate or exact age, and the position you are running for? What does this position mean to you as an individual, and what do you feel you, your, your position allows for the town for better or for us? Name's Wade George. Uh, I'll be 61 in May. And I'm running for a seat as a town trustee on the board. Uh, the seat that I currently hold uh, uh, oversees a town administrator, uh, water and sewer, and, and, uh, and a street crew. Uh, I also sit at, uh, at the town's uh, uh, request uh, on the uh, uh, Antonito Housing Board. And... Uh, listen in on and, and help with uh, their concerns.
concerns in, in their agenda. Okay, that sounds good. So is the, the Town of Antonito Housing Board, that, that's a separate project from the actual town, or is that... Uh, yes, uh, it'd be what people refer to as low-income housing. Okay, that's what I was, I was thinking. I just wanted to clarify. Okay, oh, 56, how could you improve the health, welfare, and education in the community if you could? Um, I'm not sure about the health and welfare. I mean, people uh, uh, are education. I would just try and, and, and encourage people to uh, to uh, keep themselves informed. Uh, I'd like to see adult education classes um, in 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 you know many areas, but uh, what's the target and and uh, and um, resources and, and the whole bit, you know, those are still details that would have to be worked out and stuff. Mm. And I'd like to see a little more interaction, I guess, with uh, with uh, our uh, our younger citizens and our and our and our elderly, and uh, that I'd like to see more interaction there in in, in sharing uh, um, uh, town's history, heritage, culture, the whole bit. Uh, 57, how would you and the team agree to disagree? Well, gee, uh, we, we tend to agree to disagree. We voice our, our concerns. Um, we listen to each other. Uh, and even if we don't agree with what the other one's saying, uh, we don't shut them down or tune them out. Um, when it comes down to it, the vote's going to be what the vote's going to be. It'll be either a yay or nay all across the board, or, or I mean, to say uh, something will get approved or disapproved, uh, and we then move on to the next uh, item. I don't think uh, many of us take, take, take the disagreements personally, um, unless somebody's being rude or offensive. Okay. What do you see as the most important challenges confronting Antonito and community? The most, the basics, uh, a broader economic base, uh, we need to, we need to uh, address that somehow or other. Uh, I think we need to, uh, um, uh, I, um, Get the. Uh, I think we need to come to a consensus with this whole 420 industry, um, uh, and agree that if to those of us that the, that, that don't like it and uh, have no use for it, then ignore it. Um, don't uh, don't continue to to attempt to to uh, rock the boat or make waves or be completely negative about it if you really have nothing to do with it in any way, shape, or form, you know? Yeah, we do understand that. We've, uh... Right, same here. Uh, and I'm just saying, you know, if if it's something that you can't fix, then ignore it, okay? If you don't like it, yes, uh, look the other way. I, I think that's one of the biggest challenges we have is that uh, we're so busy uh, um, uh, concerning ourselves with our own point of view that we're not looking at the big, at, at uh, other people's point of view, and uh, and and taking in um, the, the realities that are that are occurring with some of the changes that uh, have been challenging to us. Um, I'll leave it at that. Okay. 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 Fifty nine. List them in order of priority and discuss how you would attempt. Oh, oh, the challenges. Okay. I think I went along. I think I answered that just now. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, 60, how would you go about obtaining income from the pot industry to help Antonito and surrounding community? Well, okay, that would be uh, the 420 industry, I guess. Okay, I'm going to say the, that uh, we're going to uh, uh, impose an excise tax or attempt to vote one in um, for these uh, grows. Uh, that are currently not taxed, as well as the uh, hemp grow that's currently not taxed, uh, that are within town limits. Okay. Um, I believe uh, I answered uh, previously uh, as far as my, my stand on uh, higher taxes, okay? 
Okay. Okay. What kind of partnerships would you seek out to help revitalize Antonito? Where does public safety, fire police rank in your list of priorities? Um, as far as I know, the fire department and all that, uh, they're doing very well. Uh, I think uh, they're maintaining uh, um, their vehicles, uh, out, uh, changing them out as they need to. Fire de the police department, not so much so. It's, uh, that's a concern. Uh, partnerships for revitalizing Antonito. Uh, I guess any that uh, seek to improve our town or help us improve our town. Uh, in a partnership sort of uh, uh, understanding as opposed to uh, um, a uh, come in and uh, take over kind of uh, situation, then I'll, I'll, I'll support that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's got to be uh, in a partnership kind of arrangement, uh, understanding whoever it may be, county, state, the feds, whoever. Uh, any private, uh, uh, I guess, uh, individuals or companies that are interested. Um, Colorado Together, Antonito Team, yeah, sure. Uh, 62, what are your thoughts on improving the school district and how would you build a positive working relationship with the school district? I don't know, I guess I'd start attending their meetings, listening to what their concerns are, and and uh, and, and uh, ask them what they need to uh, improve on. I think uh, they, could, I could, they could use a larger uh, uh, student body in, in way of numbers, um, uh, but I, I, I think uh, they also, I, I, I would guess that uh, there's, there's a lot of misinformation concerning uh, the school district, and, and so I would, uh, um, I would say one of the steps would be to, yes, attend a school board meeting, uh, and uh, see what's on the agenda, see what the concerns are. Um, Is there any it, issue that you would like to mention concerning the misunderstanding of the school? Well, uh, I, I, they're just general kind of things that have, that have uh, caused people to uh, not send their children to this school. Uh, um, they're, they're, I don't know... Uh, what would you say would be the main cause of lack of understanding of the school? From what I'm given to understand, there's people that are very dissatisfied with the quality of education, the uh, curriculum, uh, um, um, size. I guess it's it's there's there's I guess maybe not enough um, uh, different subjects um, that are. That, are, that, sh that people see that ought to be taught. There's uh, the athletics program is 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 a little uh, well. This is, this is the first year we fielded a football team in in the last couple of years, so I think uh, I believe that's how that is. As far as the curriculum, um, some folks would say that that's not broad enough. There's there and and and, and others would say that. Uh, that our graduates aren't aren't uh, uh, prepared for for college or or uh, um, um, a more structured uh, uh, I guess life I don't know because um, I guess in this day and age you, you just need to higher education to 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 get you through life you know a, a high school diploma uh, diploma isn't gonna be enough. Or that's what I'm given to understand. Okay. So, yeah, that preparedness. Okay? Okay, sounds good. Uh, uh, 63, I believe. 63, is there a list of accountability for items within the mansion since purchase? How do you, how do you plan on determining or approving to residents that no items have been misused? Similar to the missing stone question above. So this one is general and did mention the patio area, which appears to be torn down. Are salvageable parts available to the residents of Antonito for cost, free, or auction? I guess these are all uh, things that we can talk about. Uh, I don't know if there's a list of accountability. I, I haven't asked for one. Um, I suppose if I asked for one, we, we, we could, uh, I don't know, I've seen stuff being being dismantled in that, uh, the, uh, the uh, east-facing side of the building, the front of the building, that porch was 
taken apart and all that. And what occurred with what, what happened to all those materials that were salvageable? I don't know. If they were sold, given away, or whatever, um, I couldn't say. If somebody came up and asked for them and or offered to pay pay for them or offered to haul them off, even like uh, roof tin and all that, uh, um, I don't know. Okay. I thought uh, 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 whatever was going to be done with it would be would be done in 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 uh, what I would assume a legal and, and, and appropriate manner. But if there's questions and concerns, then yes, let's look into it. Okay. Okay, and just uh, as another candidate stated, what what is your policy for residents of Antonito to to uh, maybe anonymously for for this question? reach out to a candidate or a current person that's in office, uh, be it mayor or town council, and reach out to you and let you know we have a concern about this, we saw this, or here's a video to this, or whatnot. How would they do that and feel comfortable that there's not going to be retaliatory issues? Do you have a, an option in place for that? Um, no. Uh, other than sharing the information with me personally, and then, uh, um, because I've, I've seen that, the retaliatory thing happen and stuff, so I'm well aware of that, okay? Okay. Uh, I do know that that exists, I know that happens, and uh, I've, I've, I've had to uh, feel that situation before, if you will. Uh, and so, when there is a concern that involves, say, the town clerk, the town administrator, uh, and since I happen to be his chair, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's obligated to uh, um, listen to what I have to, to share with him as far as concerns or complaints or whatever. Okay, appreciate that. Um, and as far as remaining anonymous, I've come to see that that's the best way to, to handle that situation, and so those who wish to share things with me uh, will remain completely anonymous at their request, yes. Okay. okay, is there a way that they could communicate to the town anonymously in place currently? Not that I know of, uh, or, or, you know, or catch me on the street as it were at the grocery store or something, yeah, um, not that I know of. I don't know uh, if, if we can, I, I, I guess I don't know what the options would be. Um, if there's, if there's, uh... Well, some of the concerns we've heard, and the reason I'm asking, and concerns have been brought up that kind of push back, you know, with tension. And so mm -hmm. community members are not necessarily wanting to go directly to the town. That, that's the reason we're asking, is just because this has been an issue that's been brought up over the, the course of the years that we've had the page open. Mm -hmm. um, I try and address those issues as they come to me. Uh, and I do um, uh, keep people's names out of things, keep them anonymous, and uh, and uh, for all intents and purposes, it's kind of worked out fairly decent. Uh, although there's some that'll 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 share those issues and concerns, and uh, boldly state uh, that they're that they're not afraid to uh, if. If uh, the other person or whoever's involved knows about this, and that could be the PD or the town administrator or the town clerk or the mayor himself or any of the other trustees. Okay. Would you be open to receiving, if reelected, anonymous letters and phone calls? Just again, for those who don't wish to speak directly to a person. Absolutely. Okay. No problem whatsoever. Okay, where are we at? Let's see. Uh, 64, I believe. 64, will you allow Antonio News with Antonio Police's cooperation to provide an ongoing weekly list of criminal stats for our community, number of citations issued or other items similar to police blotters in other media formats? Of course. Sure. Okay. Sure. We get our monthly report uh, at our board meetings. Uh, uh, I can pass that on to you guys or whatever. Uh, if you'd rather do it on, on a weekly basis, uh, I think uh, PD would cooperate. Um, I, and I'm, I, I, and uh, the police commissioner happens to be uh, uh, Trustee Lucero, and so I would say uh, he, I, I don't know that he wouldn't be open to that, but, you know, again, I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll look into it. Thank you so much.
Mm-hmm. Okay, 65. Will you be hiring former criminals under your term if elected? Uh, I guess uh, it depends on uh, uh, what they were convicted of and, and uh, okay, and if we're referring to, to previous uh, town employees that may have been PD and then uh, no longer have their certification, well, they're not going to get hired uh, to, to be uh, police officers again, okay? Okay. Uh, let's just say that. Uh, if, if, if it's a former employee uh, that's uh, already had his one, two, third strike, uh, probably not because uh, that's, that would be a form of nepotism and we probably shouldn't be doing that. Uh, and I understand that uh, uh, an ex, uh, you know, once somebody's done their time and rehabbed and all that, deserves a second chance and everything, and I, and I, and I agree with that totally. However, uh, if it's a person that's uh, uh, been in a position of authority and they've abused that authority uh, uh, or that office, then I would have to say, no, you're not going to get another chance to do that to people again. Okay? Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Where are we at? Oh. Last question, 66. 66. Will you prosecute anyone working for the town or as a sentence for community service who is caught stealing, driving, antenatal equipment without a driver's license or is visibly intoxicated while performing their duties? I would hope so. Uh, I think uh, uh, they need to be held accountable and responsible and made aware that, uh, yeah, you don't get to just uh, uh, go run them up just because you work for the town or whatever, you know? Um I represent uh, uh, my voters, my community, and uh, I, I, I uh, feel that they that they should feel safe and secure that uh, I'm going to look after them or help look after them, uh, help look after the town's best interest. And um, if if I happen to catch or see anything that I consider either not not appropriate or and I and I do that I, I do I stop and, and ask what's going on. Okay. So that that's, that's the last question. Um, we appreciate your time, Mr. George, and uh, wish you well in the election. Is there anything you'd like to add before we finish? Oh, just participate. Go vote, folks. Uh, uh, whether you vote for me or not, uh, just participate. Let 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 the let your vote be your voice. Um, if I happen to, to uh, retain a seat, thank you very much. And if I don't, it's been a pleasure and an honor. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Mr. George.